Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you. I greet those of you who are with us in person, those of you who are on the live stream, and anybody who finds us at some point in the future on our YouTube channel. Um, we're glad to welcome all of you to worship. For those of you who are with us in person, I'll invite you to look at the right inside page of the worship flyer. You'll find announcements there. I'm having an exciting day already, so I'm not going to take the whole worship service with announcements, but we have some good news. The first good news, wait for the whole bit. Our good friend, Reverend Marta, well, why don't you stand up so we can all wave and cheer for you? Because <laughs> there's going to be cheering. Wait till the second part. <laughs> The first part is that she gets to retire. The bishop said it was okay. But, no, no, but wait. <laughs> the really awesome part is the bishop also says she can keep working here part time. Yay! <laughs> so more later, but there will be a party to mark that transition period, right? Yes. Okay, thanks, Marta. Um, the next good news is that the United Methodist Women have opened a bookstore just past the sanctuary, and this is very important. The name is the Epistle Stop, a reference to Fanny, Fanny Flag literature and to books of the Bible. And if that doesn't make sense, the people managing the bookstore will be happy to explain it to you when you visit. Now, contents of said bookstore at the moment include books, games, gems and jellies, and homemade items. And the quantity of those will depend on what you bring with you to donate. <laughs> and the, it will benefit the United Methodist Women's Mission Projects. Um, and if you have questions, Connie, would you stand and wave? <laughs> this person might be willing to answer questions after worship. And she and her friends, I'm fairly certain, will be at the epistle stop after worship so you can learn more and have an orientation to her. Speaking of after worship, I believe our resident Girl Scout, Wrigley, will be in the gathering place with what remains of her cookie stash available for sale. She also has an order form if we've run out and she can negotiate with you about that. Okay, now, this is a time for your listening ears. Do you have your listening ears on? Everybody knows. No, not everyone knows. Now, March is United Methodist Committee on Relief Month. That's a month that United Methodists have a special offering to support the overhead costs of running our giant international relief organization, UMCOR. So we get really high marks some places like GuideStar as a nonprofit for being an effective place to give money because we raise all the overhead, the salaries, the rent, the phone bills ourselves so that when donors give to our particular crisis, all the money goes to that crisis. So March is a really important month for fundraising to support UMCOR. And so our communal offering in March goes to that. Just regular old awesome UMCOR. However, there is a specific international crisis going on right now in the Ukraine. And we know that some people want to support that in particular. Now, UMCOR, about five years ago, stopped letting us label gifts for particular crises because it was getting hard to keep track of every crisis and figure out how to get the money to the exact crisis. So now, when we give money to a specific relief project, you can choose between international and domestic or United States. So if you want to add your funds, to the funds that are going to be helping Ukrainian relief, write the word international by UMCOR, and it will go to that fund. And I realize that sounds a little bit much, but we want to respect your intentions. 
So UMCOR supports the whole thing, including the Ukraine. The people who are strategizing right now about what to do are supported by that. But if you want to know that your money is helping that international crisis, just write UMCOR International and we'll be sure it goes to that. It's also written down in the bulletin, will help you succeed, and really, if you send it to the wrong place, it'll still be really helpful. Okay, so, do, 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 do. masks are now optional. Please support anyone wearing one. Please support anyone not wearing one. And as always, for the past 100 years, if you don't feel well, stay home and watch worship online or call a friend and they can tell you everything that happened. And bring clean new underwear or pajamas or socks for Undie Sunday. Everything else you can read about yourself because what's most important is worship. And I welcome you to worship. Please rise in body or spirit.
As darkness gives way to light and winter's sleep to fresh beginnings, we come today to be reminded of God's love for us like the green shoots of renewed life stirring beneath the soil. We welcome an awakening of God's word in our lives. In this time of reflection and repentance, we affirm our identity and we claim our security as children of God. We worship and remember the God that wanders this season with us. Our lectionary today is from the Gospel according, Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke, reading from the fourth chapter and beginning with the first verse. Please remain standing in body or spirit for the reading of the Gospel. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in, in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the evil one. He ate nothing, nothing at all those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The evil one said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the evil one led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the evil one said to him, to you I will give glory and all this authority for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the evil one took him to Jerusalem 
and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and or their hands, on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put your, the Lord your God to the test. When the evil one had finished every test, it departed from him until an opportune time. This is the word of life. So the story of Jesus and the devil is what launches our season of Lent. Um, we hear that Jesus is in the desert for 40 days and has encounter after encounter um, of distraction or temptation. In this season of Lent, um, Marta and I will be using a theme of wander or wandering as we think about our scriptures. Um, I've been trying to think of additional words for each week. And this week, as I read the scripture, the ones that came to mind were distraction and focus. I feel that time and again, the devil is distracting Jesus with temptations. And time and again, Jesus responds with his own focus, a spiritual focus that keeps him from being distracted on his intentional wanderings of his faith journey. So, um, the devil first distracts Jesus by mentioning his hunger. Hunger can be very distracting. Also, not hunger, just food can be distracting. I could distract you right now by mentioning things like nachos and ranch dressing. Um, those are popular ways, I think, to distract Midwesterners. Or Dorothy Lynch dressing. Who here doesn't have a fond memory or an opinion about that? So here comes the devil talking about food. And his temptation or distraction is, I think you might be hungry. Why not use your relationship with God to turn a stone into bread? But Jesus is not distracted. He stays focused and says, no. I will not be distracted by your buffet of tater tot casseroles. I am focused on my faith journey. The devil then tries again and says, you know, you seem to be living a very sparse life out here in the desert. Your shoes have holes in them. You appear to be wearing rags and you are not very clean. If you were to worship me, you could not just have all the things, but hashtag all the things. Jesus, though, is not distracted by the comforts of stuff and the promise of that. The clawfoot bathtub full of nice bubbles is not a distraction because he is focused on his faith journey. No, he says to the devil, I know that that warm bath will eventually grow cold. I'm probably allergic to the fragrances that are used anyway. I will stay focused on my faith journey. The third attempt for distraction is when the devil attempts to question the power of God in the world says, you know, if you believe in God, why don't you go to the top of the unicameral 
and throw yourself from the tippy top of that sower and see if your God will save you. Go to the top of the Bat Building in downtown Omaha. No matter what color that building is lit up and throw yourself down and see if your God will save you. And Jesus says, I will not be distracted by your threat of a fear of heights because God is at work for good in the world all the time and I am on a faith journey. We don't have time for this. We are learning and growing in faith, not in fear. Jesus claims all of those temptations as distractions while he stays focused on his faith journey. Um, some of you will, there's a pastor joke that if you want to make sure people don't know about something, you put it in the newsletter. Ah! I don't know, maybe, maybe this is a church where they do read the newsletter. <laughs> we'll find out. Um, as I was thinking about this thing of wandering, I remembered a phrase <laughs> that I was pretty sure I had read in my teenage years. Not all who wander are lost. And so we live in a time when these things are knowable. So I looked it up and the phrase, not all who wander are lost is from the book Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Those of you who have read this, that series know that the characters in those books are often on a journey, and the journeys are accompanied by riddles in the form of poems, and this is one of those riddle poems that this phrase comes from. Not all who wander are lost. I find those words uh, not just fitting for Tolkien's story, but also for the season of Lent. Our call to Lenten wandering is to wander with intention, to be open to God's working in our lives, to wander with focus, not aimlessly with our mind closed to what's happening, but rather as we saunter, whether in our bodies or in our minds or in our souls, being open to seeing, hearing, feeling how God is working around us. To wander does not mean that we are lost. It might mean that we are busy finding and being found. As the daughter of two composition professors, I've been taught to remember context when I'm reading poetry or quoting a line. So I looked farther at the poem from which this line comes. The line immediately above it goes like this. All that is gold does not glitter. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all who wander are lost. Paired together, those phrases might tell us through the lens of Tolkien's poet eyes that part of the treasure of wandering is realizing that our truth is not always something that catches our attention right away. Things that glitter do catch our attention, but the substance might be something that takes a little bit more time to find, more intention to discover. As we wander through Lent, it may be that we are able to see past the glitter and find the gold of the true treasure of our faith journey. Jesus is able to resist temptation, to stay focused and not be distracted in the scripture that Kathy read today because he is spiritually and mentally prepared. That comes from time in the desert. It comes from time of intentionally wandering. It comes from time of studying scripture, of being in relationship with people with whom he can have good conversations and times of prayer. His 40 days in the desert themselves become part of how he prepares himself for future days. This weekend was a, a special and odd time in my life as a pastor. We marked the 100th episode of Piano Side Worship, 
a strange and special creature in the world of worship. It's a worship service that only exists online. We began it 100 weeks ago as COVID began. It was a time of utter chaos and distraction, probably for many of you, but I know for myself as a pastor. There was nothing that could prepare me at that point in my 25th year of ministry for the knowledge that I was looking at a coming Sunday with what appeared to be no worship. That's not something I had any way of processing. And yet, because we are people as a congregation, as a denomination, as a people who share communion together at a table, remembering and imagining all the saints who've come before us, we were able to find focus in the midst of that distraction. Somehow I had the wits about me to take an actual photo, not a screenshot, a photo of our committee meeting to plan that first worship service. So when you look at the photo, I'm in the upper corner with my phone taking the photo. I'm such an inept nerd. It would have been much easier to do a screenshot. I would have looked much better. My hair would have been more organized and my phone wouldn't have been the only thing you could see. The other people in the photo were somebody eating a bowl of cereal, somebody else holding their pet dog, and somebody else in the picture a little bit askew. And from that group, we figured out that we could do something that appeared to be totally novel and different, and yet was the same familiar worship that we'd always known. Prayers, scripture, intentional words of interpretation, music, with people that we know and trust. So in the midst of that distraction, we found our focus. What's happened as we have returned to in-person worship is that that worship service still gathers between 30 or 60, or the early episodes, 120 people. They're all still online, and we don't know who's watching, but we do know that some people watch at 3 in the morning. I find this fascinating. People don't always watch the most recent episode. Sometimes they pick something from six months ago. I don't know why. And yet those worship services stand as a gift from this congregation, whether or not you've seen them, because you support through your prayers, through your presence, through your incredible focus, and ministry to those people who need it at whatever time that they do. What I'm saying is this. Every day God helps us to find our focus in the midst of distraction. And just as surely as Jesus was able to find his focus in the midst of incredible distraction, so too are we called to focus, to remember that God calls and claims us each day, no matter what wilderness is confronting us, so that we might continue to draw on the past in the present moment to focus on our future together. Later in this worship service, we will share the sacrament of Holy Communion together, giving thanks for all those people who've come before us who have had the courage to focus on sharing with us the stories of faith, their hope for the future, so that we too, in this season of Lent, might find our focus listening for God as we, in a distracting time, find ways to continue to serve, to witness to God's love in the world, to forgive one another, to live as a reconciled people, and for this journey, for this time of wandering, for this acknowledgement of distraction and our opportunity to focus, we give thanks. Amen. Let us begin our time of prayer with a prayer of confession. So we pray together. Loving Lord, 
at the beginning of this Lenten season, we are met with the challenge of handing over every bit of our lives that do not come from you to rid ourselves of what clutters our lives and all that distracts us from the simple truth of your love for us. Your prophets have called us to change the way we worship, to make internal sacrifices instead of external ones, to seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with you each and every one of our days. If we don't give anything up for Lent, then let us at least give up this, that we might cease living in ways that disconnect us from you. For every one of our steps is like a circle around your temple. Perhaps this Lent, we can give up our way and give ourselves to your way for us. So wander with us on this Lenten way. May we walk with Jesus toward the hill just outside Jerusalem. May we, like him, take out our cross and follow, spending each moment of our lives living responsively to you, just as Christ himself did. For that is a faithful way. Amen. Shelter of the Most High, you know our hearts and fears that can be overwhelming at times. Considerable fears related to the war in the Ukraine, for refugees who don't have time to give in to the fear, for those that have stayed to protect their country, and need your protection and courage. We also pray for the fears related to the wars within our own hearts. For those fears that keep us from doing and being the people you have asked us to be. Keep us in your safe and protected space. That in the face of temptation, we will wander towards seeing the Christ within others. Being more compassionate towards them and growing in love. God of mercy. Guardian of souls. Be with those whose souls are transitioning from earth to everlasting glory and with their families. God of mercy. Be with those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. For those who are in pain, for those dealing with addictions, for people facing surgery and dialysis and rehab. In some way, make them and their caregivers aware that they are not alone. Just as you were with Jesus as he faced temptations in the wilderness, you are always with us, God of mercy. Spirit of wisdom, breathe your gifts into our lives that our eyes might be open to the joy that awaits us in the day and in the night. We give thanks for the rain that has nourished the earth and the thunder that once again awakened us to your power and glory. 
We express our gratitude for celebrations in our lives, for birthdays and anniversaries, and other milestones that lift our hearts and bring us joy. Fortify us that your light will flow through us and our lives will radiate peace and love. God of mercy. We pray all of these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Will you join me in offering one another signs of peace and reconciliation? For our tithes and gifts, we remember that we support the ministries and missions of this church.
easy now, isn't it, to prepare our hearts and minds after that beautiful, beautiful selection. And um, just a moment of personal privilege in thanking our, our friend Zach Fisher for that beautiful solo this morning. You'll hear Zach again as you come forward for communion. I invite you now to turn to page 13 in the front of the hymnal where you'll find our prompts for communion. A reminder that uh, there are offering plates for our UMCOR second mile offering this day. And that the table that you see before you, set and ready, uh, has been in, given an invitation by Jesus Christ himself to you this day. All are welcome. None will be turned away from this table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and of earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain he heard your still small voice. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during 40 days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these 40 days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to reaffirm the covenant you made with us through Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, and as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. 
in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
Please join me in the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
as you leave this place, abide in the shadow of the Most High. God is our refuge and our strength. As you wander through the wilderness, put your trust in the Holy One. Christ is our shelter in times of temptation and fear. As you face times of trial, call on the name of the Lord and be saved. The Comforter leads us safely through. Go with God's blessing. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.